um, and thank you for having me here as part of this amazing Explore the Digital Future program. Uh, Jenna and Laura asked me to come and speak with you all about uh, computing education and share a little bit of insight into sort of the technology industry and applications of computing skills in the real world. Uh, so I thought I would cover um, a few things. One is um, just give you a little bit of an introduction into who I am and what I do at Microsoft. Uh, then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about sort of my personal journey or path into computing and technology. Uh, and then I'll cover off on, you know, why is it so important to be teaching young people about computers and technology? Um, and then as part of that discussion, I'll talk a little bit uh, about physical computing, which is near and dear to my heart. Um, and then kind of give you a little bit of an overview of MakeCode, which is the product that I work on uh, here at Microsoft. And then I also want to uh, give space for uh, Q&A. So if you do have questions as I go through any of this content or material or just curious about, you know, uh, what I do or, or computing jobs in general, please go ahead and pop those into the chat uh, and we can um, discuss those at the end or, um, you know, or you might be able to come off mute and we can uh, also ask questions at the very end. All right. Um, so as Jen mentioned, I'm a product manager at Microsoft. Um, I work on an educational product called Microsoft Make Code. Uh, it's an online learning environment for um, primary and secondary school students to learn to code in a hopefully fun and engaging way. Um, so this is a photo of part of our team at the office um, at a daily meeting we have called Stand Up. Um, and uh, I'll just circle, that's me in the back there. Um, and for this meeting, you can see that we, we don't all, all actually stand up, <laughs> but we do kind of all huddle together around, um, you know, every day we do this and kind of go around and share any updates, what people are working on, and discuss decisions that we need to make as a team. Uh, so on our team, there are three different roles. So there's product managers like myself. There are software engineers who, uh, who do the, all the coding and build the product features. And then there are designers uh, who come up with all of the designs. Now, the job of a product manager is to do a lot of what we call customer development. Uh, and this consists of user testing, interviews with customers, um, market research to identify opportunities and trends, uh, and then bringing back all of these insights to the team to, to sort of determine our product roadmap and also manage our release schedule. We do also do a lot of training and documentation on how to actually use the product for customers. Uh, we also do a lot of data analysis and reporting on how the product is actually being used and kind of are just general stewards of the product. And again, we work very, very closely with both the design and engineering teams to come up with new product features and capabilities. So let's back up a little bit. And I thought I would spend some time kind of sharing with you all my journey into computing. And this started when I was 11 years old. Uh, we had um, uh, some neighbors um, who, Mr. Mr. Simon, who would come over, you know, every afternoon or so for tea with, um, with my parents. And one day he was complaining that he couldn't understand this newfangled software called Excel, Microsoft Excel. And he was trying to uh, do his taxes and calculate his household uh, finances using this program, but he was having so many issues. And, uh, and so my mother volunteered me to help Mr. Simon. And so one day after school, I went over to his house and kind of took a look at his spreadsheet and, and tried to help him with uh, calculating his taxes. And so just kind of helped him format uh, the columns and rows, did a few very lightweight formulas um, for him. But he was so impressed with this 
that ever since then he started calling me the tech whiz kid, right? And so it would be like, oh, there's the, there goes the tech whiz kid. <laughs> and for me, that was kind of a turning point because even though I, up until then, had not considered myself, you know, exceptional with computer skills or, um, you know, technology, because of that sort of perception that, oh, well, maybe I am pretty good at technology. You know, that became a, a reality for me. And so I was, I turned into the go-to kid that people would go to when they had problems with their computers or um, couldn't figure out their modem connections or uh, even needed help programming their television remotes, right? And so this idea of, you know, at this young age, this perception that yes, you are good at, you know, technology, is so important uh, for students. And so uh, so that was a, a great first kind of introduction into technology and computing for me. And it really kind of helped build my self-confidence that, you know, I could do things with, with technology and computing. Um, unfortunately, my um, neither my middle school nor my high school had any computing classes or any technology classes in general. And so my next um, kind of brush with computing came at the university level. Now, I had gone to university thinking I would be a math major. Um, I had a really great math teacher in high school who really influenced me, and I loved math. But, um, and at the time, the math department was co-located in the same building as the computer science department. I distinctly remember uh, freshman year um, in college, sitting in a, you know, uh, quite boring math class where we were, you know, proving theorems, doing these very long, uh, complicated theorem proofs. And uh, just looking out through the window of the door of the classroom into the other uh, classroom across the hall and seeing these kids, you know, wiring up these things and there were lights and like buzzers going and thinking, what are they doing? That looks like so much fun. <laughs> and so the next semester I signed up for that class. It ended up being a intro to CS class where Students were, you know, breadboarding their own um, very uh, basic calculators with uh, with circuits and, and LED lights. And I just kind of fell in love with the idea of building stuff with technology. And so um, after that class, it just kind of hooked me. And I went on and majored in computer science um, and uh, was also a a volunteer at the computer lab and a teaching assistant and really kind of um, gravitated to, to, to those classes. Um, and after university, um, I got a job as a software developer um, and also an IT admin and then came to Microsoft where um, I really kind of came to the insight that I loved jobs where I could use computing in a very creative way. So I've been working at Microsoft for uh, the past 17 years now, um, and I've had many different jobs uh, along that way. Um, but, but like I said, um, the jobs that I really love the most are ones where I was able to use technology in very creative ways, and also um, in teaching and learning. And, uh, and so, um, so the job that I currently have now is one of my favorite jobs because I get this photo is of, is of me at a computer science fair with some students uh, demonstrating one of the uh, microbit air guitars. So, uh, so things like this is, is what I really love to do. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why we think it's important to teach computer science. Um, so I think we can all agree that the purpose of really of, of education is to prepare students uh, for, you know, for ongoing education, for, for their careers, and for citizenship. Um, and I love this quote from Malcolm X here that, where he says, education is a passport to the future. 
Tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Uh, and, you know, that's true even more so today, probably. We live in a time of unprecedented technology change, right, with hugely rapidly evolving economy and labor market. Um, and so these are some of the job listings that I pulled uh, on, online for, um, for the year 2030. Um, this, these have been predicted. And some of these exist today, actually. Um, but things like this augmented reality journey builder, so designing virtual experiences for retail and whatnot and games, um, AI healthcare technician, this, this one actually exists today. So using artificial intelligence to diagnose and treat patients, um, smart city analyst, so analyzing data from IoT sensors, uh, and transport controller, you know, for the brave new world of automated vehicles and drones. Um, so, and all of these jobs require a deep level of comfort and understanding of technology. You know, these aren't specialized computer science jobs. These are gonna be normal everyday jobs. Uh, and, uh, and this reality is very close, right? Closer than we think. Um, so, so when Microsoft thinks about education, we think about how we can best help schools and educators prepare students for this future. Uh, and not just by using technology to teach and learn, but by teaching and learning about technology. So uh, in just a, a few stats, I'm not gonna belabor this point, but uh, we know that there's huge growth and demand for technology skills in the economy. We see computing skills being required in more and more professions, you know, across the board. And just within software development, uh, there's been a 22% projected growth in this field. So that's three times more than the average job market growth rate. Uh, and apologies, these stats are actually all US based, but I'm sure uh, UK Scotland numbers are very similar. Um, and you can see that, you know, despite this demand, at the same time, there's just a not, not enough skilled students um, or an equitable pipeline of talent, right? And we know that technology creators are going to be shaping all of our futures. And so we need to make sure that those creators represent all of us. All right. So... We do know that computer science uh, at the primary and secondary level is critical to prepare students to be successful in this digital world and to create that diverse pipeline. Um, but I think we, we do know also that um, computer science has had some challenges um, in this space. Um, you know, one of the big challenges is, of course, educator capacity. There's you know, just not enough teachers with these skills to teach these subjects, and that's why you all are in this program. Uh, and the second challenge, I think, is also equitable access and engagement, right? We see um, girls and other underrepresented minority student populations you know, opting out of these types of classes. And so our challenge is to make learning about technology fun uh, relevant and exciting for every student. And so that's where we're trying to shift more of this sort of computing education from these computer lab type environments into more of the core classrooms and the core curriculum in schools. So, um, so more like spaces like this. Um, and, uh, and this is what we call sort of hands-on computing. So uh, where we really think about the learner as the center of the learning activity, not um, the technology. Um, and the technology is really kind of more of a building material, right? It's not an endpoint uh, where you have a student staring at a screen, but really kind of um, a classroom resource uh, like you know, construction paper or popsicle sticks, right? And so our approach to computer science is really meant to be hands-on, playful, and personal. 
And it's something that we believe every student should be exposed to. And um, we use something called physical uh, computing as an inclusive approach to computing education. So physical computing, of course, is how I got into computers at the university level. So again, it's a little bit near, near and dear to my heart, but we also do know that other approaches like games, game-based learning is also very, very engaging for students. But I thought I would spend a little bit of time here just talking about physical computing. Um, so just in terms of the definition, when we talk about physical computing, we mean essentially any kind of physical device that can be programmed. Um, and we see a lot of benefits to this approach. So first of all, um, it gives a more holistic view of CS education. So uh, computers and computer science isn't just about learning to code. Um, that's a big part of it for sure. But computer systems are made up of hardware, software, data, networking, right? It's important to be able to teach all aspects. Um, creativity and self-expression. You know, I talked a little bit about this before and about that being uh, sort of one of the grounding principles of my career. Um, technology is extremely creative uh, and physical computing even more so, uh, especially when you bring in the crafting and the making aspects. Uh, makes it so much more engaging for a broad range of students. Um, in, in a lot of these projects, you know, the coding isn't necessarily done for coding's sake. It's done in service of creating a very personally meaningful project for the student. Um, learning by doing, you know, trial and error is how kids learn uh, when, you, when you do physical computing. Either the light lights up or it doesn't, and you gotta figure out why not, right? Uh, and then experiential learning, a lot of research to back up the value of kinesthetic and experiential learning. Uh, students learn with their hands and their bodies just as much as they do, you know, sitting at, at a desk and reading or writing. Uh, industry IoT trends, certainly the Internet of Things is here to stay. And, uh, and students are learning great skills that will help prepare them for this you know, new world of intelligent edge devices. Um, and lastly, I would just say there is this magical moment that happens when you know, a student makes a light flash or a buzzer buzz you know, through code. So this combination of the digital world and the physical world, I think really showcases the true, the true magic of technology. Um, and we're, we're definitely seeing evidence that this approach is working. So um, this is uh, just some stats from the BBC um, back in uh, 2017, I believe. They did this study um, where they did pre and post surveys of students, um, you know, and they distributed about a million microbits across the UK um, and found that there was a 70% increase in interest among students uh, among girls, sorry, especially, to continue studying computer science after having been exposed to the microbit. So, encouraging results. Um, if you are interested in learning more about uh, the benefits of physical computing, there's a lot of research available, um, both on the Make Code site, uh, as well as um, the microbit.org site. All right, I'm just checking chat to see if there's any questions here. Yeah, okay. So let me switch gears really quick and talk a little bit about MateCode, which is the product that I work on. So uh, again, we got a lot of our roots of MateCode around this physical computing aspect. Um, and so that even shows up in our name, MateCode. Uh, we really believe in the value of, uh, of constructionism learning and making things as well as coding. So combining that magic of making and the maker mindset with the power of code. Uh, our mission is to inspire the next generation of technology creators. And as I mentioned before, you know, we really do this to tr by trying to make an approachable experience 
for uh, students with a broad range of interests and skill levels. You can find our product online if you go to matecode.com. You'll see we've got a few different code editors available. Um, certainly for the micro bit, which is what I talked about before, that was our very first code editor. Uh, but we also support other microcontroller devices, some robotics, and then games and game-based learning, as I mentioned before. This is just an example of some fun student projects that we do, um, and certainly that um, have been posted on Twitter. Uh, things like a magic wand, um, those air guitars that I talked about before, uh, laser tag, um, and these uh, wrist cuffs, those pedometer wrist, wrist cuffs, um, as well as like uh, wallets that calculate uh, how much money you have, things like that. When we first set out to build MakeCode, we had some core product principles we wanted to follow. Um, again, our mission was around this idea of hands-on computing. We also wanted to make sure that the product just worked for every teacher in every classroom. And so um, MakeCode is um, free, it's online, there's nothing to download and install, so it works across platforms and devices and browsers. Um, we wanted to really focus on this idea of inclusive computing education, so making sure that whatever we offer are these you know, physical or immersive experiences. Um, and then we also wanted to make sure that MakeCode had a progression path to real world skills. So um, we offer both the drag and drop block-based programming as well as JavaScript and Python sort of real world text editing programming. Um, and then lastly, we really see ourselves as a platform. So we're open source and we work with many different partners um, to support them and extend this uh, coding environment to others. Mm -hmm.